Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to thank you for coming from all over the world to watch my videos and for the kind comments that you make and the praise that you give me. I, I just am amazed by it. I'm, I'm humbled by it and I'm so thankful. So thank you very much. The first item on today's agenda is a tweet on X that struck me as, uh, how should I put this? It, it's the Biden administration, okay? But to me, when I listen to this, I hear typical politician speech. On October 7th, President Biden said, my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. That is not true anymore, correct? That is, no, it is true. It's still it, true today. How is his support unwavering, but you're also reconsidering policy choices? Both can be true. They cannot be true. They're, they're completely different things. No. No, no. I just, is, I'm sorry. I, I, he I, is I, wavering. No, no, no. Come on. How is he that. not wavering? Uh, come on. <laughs> Come on now. As I said, and as it says in that readout, we made clear, and, and he made it clear to the Prime Minister in his call, that our support for Israel's self-defense remains ironclad. They face a range of threats, and the United States isn't going to walk away from helping Israel defend itself. That said, you can say all that, and you can act on that, and you can believe that, and the President does, and still believe that the manner in which they are defending themselves against the Hamas threat, needs to change. And that is the conversation that we had today. But both things are true. Our support is ironclad and consistent. It's not going to not going to stop. It's not going not, not gonna, to not going to waver. But will there perhaps be some policy changes we might have to make if we don't see policy changes out of Israel? Yes. How is that unwavering? It sounds like you guys are trying to have it both ways here. No, I we don't know that Israel, I can. But we are going to make all these changes because we don't support Israel. I didn't. Now, the reason why I show you this is not because I want to criticize the Biden administration, although I could easily do that, but because this is so typical of the way that the U.S. deals with other nations, and it, it, it's so frustrating for me. On the one hand, they say they support you fully. And this, they did this in Vietnam, by the way, which is why it's such a sore point for me. They say they support you fully, but then they say, but you have to do X, Y, and Z. Why does the United States get to tell other nations how they have to conduct their business? What right does the United States have to do that? In my opinion, none. The only right the U.S. has to do in regard to other nations is to say either we will give you money or we will not. If we don't believe in your mission, if we don't think your, your, uh, uh, whatever your goals are are correct, then we won't give you money. If we do, then we will. That's it. But U.S. State Department and U.S. politicians are constantly meddling in the affairs of other nations. And it is so frustrating to me. It's just, it's wrong. If other nations tried to do that to us, we would laugh at them. But what gives us the right to do it to other nations? In my opinion, nothing. Nothing at all. So that's my first one. The second one is titled, Fannie Willis Commits a Felony. This is also on Twitter, and I'm going to show it to you because it's uh, fairly brief, but if you're not familiar with Fannie Willis, she is the uh, district attorney of the Fulton County, Georgia. And I'm uh, by the way, stop this, Fannie so. did reach out to us. Okay, stop. Um, she is the district attorney of Fulton County, Georgia. She's the one that is trying Trump for violation of the racketeering statutes because he tried to get Georgia to go count their votes correctly. Now, that's my bias, okay? 
Other people would say he tried to alter the election or he tried to convince uh, the Secretary of State to find some votes. But regardless of, of what he did, the point of this is that Fannie Willis, the district attorney of the Fulton County, Georgia, has now committed a felony because she's constantly interfering in other people's business. Listen to this. Uh, by, by the way, Fannie did reach out to us, my, the, one of my colleagues in Maryland, and was rude and abrupt with him on the phone. And, and he was dealing with the Maryland case. I was dealing with the Georgia case. And uh, she ended up recording him. You know, Maryland is a one-party state. I mean, a two-party state. Uh, both parties have to consent. Um, I'm sorry. So are you party. saying that, that she illegally recorded a phone call? Oh, yeah. It's a felony in Maryland. Uh, by, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't even know why Fannie Willis is even interested in a case in in Maryland. What does that have to do with her jurisdiction? Nothing as far as I can tell. But yet she got involved and in the process she committed a felony. So we'll see if anything comes of that. Who knows? Uh, this next item is Tucker Carlson. And again, I'll put all these links in the description so that you have access to them. And um, the only reason I'm showing you this is because I, I thought this guy was just weird. And uh, I've never heard of him before. His name is Brian Johnson. And he is uh, apparently a tech uh, billionaire or millionaire at least. Has a lot of money, let's put it that way. And he's trying to uh, figure out how to stay alive forever. So I'm not going to show you a lot of this, but the first part just, I, I shook my head. I said, look, this guy is crazy. So it is the most basic truth of biology that the second you reach maturity, you exit adolescence and become an adult, you start dying, you degrade, and then you expire. This is called the aging process. And you maybe first start noticing it in your 40s, long after it's already begun because there are visible symptoms. You get Let's wrinkly see, and up, bald, and if you can't stay away from the pizza, you get a yeah. little fat, and that's kind of inevitable, uh, or we've been told it's inevitable. But a man called Brian Johnson has decided it's not necessarily inevitable. He was a very large figure in the tech world, made a ton of dough, and then started thinking about his body and the nature of life and the future of human existence and has become pretty famous recently for saying that he has, in a way, begun to reverse the aging process and maybe even cracked the code that limits the human lifespan. But watch him explain. It's hard to believe tech millionaire Brian Johnson is 46 years old, but no matter his chronological age, he's striving for the biological age of an 18-year-old. His team of 30 doctors utilize all the latest tech. The plan is rigorous. At $2 million a year, a life like this is out of reach for almost everyone. And this is what I take you on think? a daily basis of supplements. It's alphabetized and we have a year supply of everything we do. He calls his all-encompassing protocol Project Blueprint. Blueprint was born out of trying to fix my own problems, but then taking care of my family, my kids and my parents, my friends. It's generated a steady churn of shock headlines. He once injected himself with his son's plasma. It's part of his quest to live forever, which he believes may happen in our lifetime. Seems a little spooky, but also interesting. And we're doing this interview because one of our smartest friends suggested it. You gotta talk to this guy, Brian Johnson. He's genuinely interesting. And he seems to be. Yeah. You can watch the rest of that yourself. When you get to the part where he describes his diet. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not going to say this is a quote, okay, because I watched it yesterday and I can't remember for sure, but I think he, he has, like for breakfast, he has broccoli and asparagus. Seriously. For breakfast. And that's just the beginning of his exciting day. I'm like, you know what? If, if you're spending $2 million a year 
just to stay alive. And your entire focus of your life from the time you get up in the morning until you go to bed at night is to stop the aging process. Then you're not having fun. What's the point of living if you're not having fun? I mean, yeah. anyway, I just thought that was funny and I thought you might enjoy uh, finding out about it and, and possibly get a good laugh out of watching it. Or maybe you'll decide you want to follow his regimen. If you've got $2 million a year, go for it. <laughs> and the, the last thing I have is gover government-funded NGOs linked to NATO are interfering in European elections. Yeah. Government-funded NGOs interfering in NATO election, uh, excuse me, of aligned with NATO or interfering in European elections. Look at this. This is really something. In February and now, Western government officials made accusations against their political enemies, but made no arrests and announced no prosecutions, which likely means they do not have any evidence of criminal activity. As such, government, military, and intelligence agencies are engaged in essentially political activities unrelated to national security and thus illegal. Now, public has learned that both NATO-funded and government-funded NGOs are working with government bodies to interfere in German elections. Their influence operation aims to keep Germany in line with American foreign policy objectives and undermine the European peace movement. In other words, they're working against we the people. And if you at all stay up with news and you're, you're the least bit cognizant of what's going on in the world, you know that NGOs are constantly being used by governments to do things that governments are not allowed to do. Here in the United States, they use them to censor us. And they've been caught, and it's in the courts now, and hopefully the courts will slap them down. But, of course, getting slapped down by court doesn't stop some of these people because they could care less about the law. But apparently it's the same over in Germany and in other parts of Europe where the NGOs are being used as a quasi-arm of the government to do the government's bidding to try and squash the opponents of the ruling party. In other words, to tell you and me, the John Doe's of the world, you're not worth it. Your vote shouldn't count. We know what's right for you. Just shut up and do what we tell you to do. It's a wonderful world we live in, isn't it? But at least I pray for you every day. I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you will live a long time and that you'll be healthy throughout and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every single person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.